Hey, Physics 30s. It's Mr. Jukley here. Um, yeah, I think, we, you know what I think we got here? I think we've got probably our shortest lesson of the year, if I'm being totally honest with you. It's lesson seven in unit five. It's all about atomic physics. This one is about atomic spectra. So in order to see atomic spectra, we need something called a spectroscope. So here is not a felt pen. Here is a spectroscope. Uh, now there's a bunch of different ways that this can work, but the ones that we have in the school have a diffraction grating at one end, and then they have an eye hole at the other end. Uh, so essentially what happens is light comes in here, it diffracts, it splits apart into its components. So we see it's split apart in the components. And then so a person is looking straight through here, but um, <clears throat> excuse me, a person is looking at the light that comes straight through here, uh, but it splits apart into its components. This is totally not the right color scheme for this, or at least not in the right order. And then you can see the different colors off to the side here. So realistically, it should be red, green, blue, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and of course, violet, but we don't really see indigo, do we? So here's a picture of me checking out the atomic spectra coming from our fluorescent lights in the school and then using my uh, list of known atomic spectra to uh, to try and figure out what the heck is in those lights. Uh, this is something I wish we were here for. I wish the whole class was here for, but uh, maybe one day, maybe one day. So atomic spectra. Let's just jump right into it and uh, let's go through the things we need to know. There are three different kinds of atomic spectra. There are Continuous, emission, and absorption spectra. Continuous, emission, and absorption. So the first one to talk about is continuous. Continuous is when we have a hot, dense object which gives off all frequency of light. So hot, dense object might be the excuse me, incandescent light bulb where you see the little squiggly piece of metal, typically tungsten, I believe. Um, inside, it gets hot. It's very, very dense, that metal, and it gives off light, and it gives off light in all frequencies with absolutely no gaps. So typically we see this from hot solids, hot liquids, and hot dense gases. Cool. All frequencies, no gaps. And of course, um, we had a, uh, in the diffraction gratings, or sorry, in the... Um, spectroscopes that we have in the school. Ours use diffraction gratings, but you can do this with a prism just as easily. You can break it apart. You can see all frequencies of visible light with no gaps. Cool. The next one to go through and talk about is the emission spectra. So our emission spectra is when we have a low pressure gas that is excited, and we typically excite it through a high voltage or sometimes through heating, although in most real world situations we see it through high voltage. So essentially what happens uh, through high voltage, we've got a potential difference and we've got low pressure tube of whatever gas we've got. And as the electrons blast across that low pressure gas, they interfere with the actual gas molecules themselves. They bump them up to a higher energy level and as they fall back down to their lower energy level, they give off a very, very, very extremely specific um, spectra that contains bright bands. So rather than having a continuous spectrum where you just see every color, now there's only bright bands of very specific colors. And these are actually the very specific colors for hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. Now different ones have different colors. This is also, so I should look at this, this is how we have our neon lights. Our, sorry, that's not our neon lights. Neon lights is the one that clearly says neon lights. Our fluorescent lights have low pressure tubes and high voltage across the two, and it essentially sends electrons from one side to another, interfering with the gas molecules that are in there and giving off light. Neon lights, that's the one that says and is neon lights, uh, works in the exact same fashion, exact same fashion. So high voltage, low pressure gas, as the electrons blast from one side to another, they excite the molecules and give off a very, very particular spectrum. And each gas has its own, each element, I should say, has its very own unique emission spectra. So we've got hydrogen, we've got sodium, we've got helium, neon, and mercury, to name a few. 
well, the few that we have on the board realistically. Cool, and notice how they only give off particular wavelengths or frequencies of light. The next one to talk about is an absorption spectra. So an absorption spectra is when we shine white light. So remember, white light is a continuous spectrum. It's all the frequencies through an unexcited low pressure gas. And what happens is it's like some of those frequencies get absorbed. Now, this is a low pressure hydrogen gas. What do you notice about the dark bands or the missing bands for hydrogen gas versus the emission spectra for hydrogen gas? It's the same things are missing. Same things are missing, right? So notice when I look at this, I don't actually know which one this is for. It might be for hydrogen even, but... Uh, Notice that they match up. So our absorption and emission spectra, the dark bands line up with the light bands. The dark bands from the absorption spectra match up with the light bands from the emission spectra. Very, very interesting. They match just about perfectly. So our absorption spectra is actually a really simple-ish way that we analyze the light from the core of our sun or realistically any other star. This is our solar spectrum. So essentially what happens with this is the sun is a hot, dense ball of, well, we'll talk about what it is in a second here, but a hot, dense ball. It is giving off all frequencies. So it is a continuous spectrum. Hot and dense means continuous spectrum. As you move further from the core of the sun, it gets cooler and cooler and cooler. Right now, relatively cooler. Like you're close to the sun, you're still burning hot, right? On Mercury, you're hundreds of degrees Celsius on the surface, but it is cooler and is unexcited as you move further from the sun. So it's passing through a cold-ish gas. It sounds like an absorption spectra about to happen, right? All frequencies passing through an unexcited cool-ish gas. Cool. So then what we see from this, when we look at the absorption spectra from the sun, the primary things that we see, the primary colors that are missing, typically correspond to hydrogen and helium, which makes us believe that the sun, at least the sun's atmosphere, is produced of primarily hydrogen and helium. Very cool, very, very cool. So, I told you this was the shortest lesson of them all. In your workbook, uh, there's a little tiny bit of practice from this. Uh, the first question, I'm looking at what page? 213. In your workbook, the first question is just identify like what type of spectrum you'd expect from these different situations. Fairly straightforward. The second question gives you four common elements. So hydrogen, sodium, helium, and mercury. And then identify the gas or gases in the sample below. So fairly straightforward. Shouldn't take a ton of time, but uh, do make sure you know what the heck's going on with that. And this, what I will mention, um, brings us into our next lesson, the Bohr model of hydrogen. The entire reason that we have the Bohr model of hydrogen is because of that emission and absorption spectrum of hydrogen. So we will leave it there. It's good talking to you, Physics 30s. As always, we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. For now.